Welcome back everyone to another episode of Let's Play Silent Hunter 3. We're currently a little bit under the waves and we've uh, picked up a sound contact on the hydrophones. This is really where I think the Type 7 is at her most graceful when she's just slightly below the waves. Uh, she really just slips through the water. Uh, it's my favorite view of her, um, just right below the surface. Crash diving is also pretty interesting, but um, I really appreciate this one. So let's just take a look at this con sound contact. We have one off our port side. Um, approximately, I'd say, probably like, what is that, 10, 15 kilometers? Yeah. Let me actually ma make this. So we're going to go to battle stations, which is why you, Borco, have been awoken. It says closing. Based on the merchant ships we've already sunk in this area, we're kind of identifying a convoy route. And this is going to be useful for us to note. Probably at the very end of this patrol, I will take a screenshot of our map, basically just identifying where the places we found uh, all these merchant ships, so that we can kind of repeat our success in later missions. Because it's my understanding, I think it's a fair assumption to make that if a ship is moving, if we have some ships kind of moving along a lane that, well, I already spoiled it. Basically, we're identifying shipping lanes. So it's at last um, weather report that we received. It was still seven meters per second wind speed, which would allow for deck guns. I know people are probably getting a little bit sick of deck guns at this point, but the thing is, we just there's no reason why we shouldn't use them if they're available to us especially because this will be at night, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so it's really important for us to save our torpedo ammo, especially because I guarantee you we won't be using any deck guns if we do make this raid on Scapa Flow. Based on the feedback so far, it appears that's going to be the case, that people are interested in a raid on Scapa Flow. I can't underscore enough, and we will have a nice private talk in my captain's quarters about this before the mission, but I can't underscore enough how dangerous that mission is. Um, I die even going through the Gibraltar Strait, as I said. I can't imagine how difficult, with mines and everything, it's going to be in order to navigate through Scapa Flow. So that'll be a real challenge. But let's deal with the situation at hand first. Let's get our lazy watch officer on deck. Probably don't need our watch, our main watch, um, or our main watchman, I guess. <laughs> Um, he's a petty officer, our main petty officer watchman. He would be the second watch officer, I guess. Although he's not an officer, he's a petty officer. I don't know what rank second watch officer would be. But we only have five officers on board, so it probably would be a petty officer. Now let's continue our pursuit of this merchant ship. Perhaps, if we get lucky, we'll have a ship which is uh, maybe slightly more valuable than the ships we've already kind of encountered. To the bunch of 2,000 ton ships, and I'm not complaining because we have been able to engage them on the surface, so those are just free tonnage to me anyway. Let's check. Yep, still 7 meters per second. So we'll probably use deck guns on this one. I'm going to go through it a bit faster because I guess at this point people understand the use of the deck gun. <laughs> and in my opinion, it's not as exciting. It's much more forgiving than firing a torpedo because if you miss, you just fire the next shot, but torpedoes make a big difference. So we'll be a little bit, um, hopefully a, a little expedited in our usage of the deck gun in this instance. Assuming, of course, that we actually do find this guy. I'm assuming we're going to run into them, but let's see, 13, if they're doing like 7 knots, 13 away, we'll take them about 50 minutes. Uh, okay, so we've already been going. It's been 222 since we surfaced the boat. So we've got 10 minutes. Yeah, we expect to meet them probably right around here. And if I don't meet them uh, around this point, we'll probably dive back down and get another hydrophone reading. And we will move ahead standard for this, just to make sure that we don't miss her. Let's get these guys into the electric room to save them a little bit. I did just swap out all the crew off camera to try to get some better personnel where they should be. 
Yeah, we're going to have to be a little bit cautious about this, though, because they could be going so far north that they would avoid me. But according, based on this, we'd expect that their heading will take them right past us, really. So let's find out. In fact, I'm going to try to monitor the Uzo a little bit more. I mean, they could be just out of range, but 12 kilometers, I think it said our visibility's unlimited. So that means that really we should be able to see them probably around 10 kilometers or so at night, I'm guessing. Maybe a little bit more, but I mean a little bit less. Probably maybe seven kilometers. Seven kilometers really does not seem unreasonable. We probably can't be seen at that distance, but it's possible for us to pick them up. Especially there's um, other factors that go into it. I don't know if Silent Hunter takes this into account as much, but I'm sure it takes into account the moon, but where the direction of the moon is. So if you're looking towards the moon or away from it, if it's at a side angle, it doesn't really impact things, but if it's in front of you, if it's just rising, you can see um, things are along the horizon much better, obviously. But as soon as it's into the sky a little bit, you'd much prefer it to be behind you, because that kind of makes you more of a shadow. But it's just a nice, beautiful day. Our uh, watch crew are able to not just to use their normal clothes, because it's not so heavy water that we are taking water over the bridge which is good. By the way, the most dangerous pastime on the on the bridge was manning the deck gun. Um, by far the most common occasion for man overboard and despite the fact that the submarines were very close to... Uh, I mean, it's, it seems really easy to climb back on a submarine. You're very close to the surface. It should be easy to spot crew. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, a lot of the people who were washed overboard were never recovered, even on the submarines. So, it's most unfortunate. Probably also the submarines couldn't invest a lot of time into recovering the personnel. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Oh, oh, there it is. We'll maintain our current orders. These guys are definitely going much further east than we expected. We're going to try to come in at them at an angle, so we're going to do like a hard almost 90 degree turn uh, to port because they are not going to visit uh, notice us right now but as we get closer to be more easily we will be more easily noticed so we're going to cut off this is going to put our um, ship our broadside towards them which makes us pretty visible but doing this now means that we can go almost head on with them for a very long time later and that is point of doing this. So let's just get a approximate bearing. Eh, 45 degrees, okay. So we'll be expecting 45 then. I don't see it, but it's registering here in the top right. You can see the ship icon is going to go cargo. We'll lock on, but I don't, I honestly don't see it. What are you guys looking at? Oh. Okay, so again, I don't have um, as good of brightness on this monitor as I keep seeing the videos and I'm like, that's not what I see. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I don't see it. Good job, Watchmen. You, you have better eyes than I do. Alright, well, let's prepare ourselves for an engagement here. We'll just speed forward a little bit more. Okay, so now it's probably about the time for us to start moving, pinching in a little bit more. This is just going to avoid um, our detection, hopefully help us avoid detection for a little bit longer. And they should be around 30 now. Now 30 degrees is still pretty visible. Uh, yeah, we're probably going to have to do a little bit more than that. And this is what I was trying to avoid. So if we had gone over here, yeah, we could have come at them at a different angle. I don't know. 
Doesn't really matter. We might as well just approach them dead on. Because uh, it doesn't matter. We're using deck gun. If we were using our torpedoes, I would try to line up. I, I prefer the dick cocaine method. Just because I'm familiar with that. Um, the German TDC is really effective. So you just input the data and it does score quite a few hits. But I'm very comfortable with the dick cocaine method. I prefer launching at 90 degrees to the target. That's uh, just my comfort with this game and how I end up scoring a lot of hits. Let's see if we have any better of a bearing on this. It should be around 10. Ah, yes, I see it now. What do we have? Another coastal freighter, no doubt. But actually, I cannot identify it. Now, first of all, we do note that it's running without its lights on. And that's the biggest indication for us that this is a valid target for engagement. We're just going to fire even if I don't see a flag because running without lights on means yeah, you're dead. I mean, it makes you much, <laughs> much less easy to detect, but if we do detect you, we, we already know. The game's already up. I would like to identify this thing first. Uh, most importantly, I want to make sure she doesn't have any weapons. <laughs> now, 1939 so, some of these ships might have left port um, before the war was even really declared. Okay, now we're in November, actually, not in October, so I guess that's probably not true anymore. Still, the war is so early on that I don't think these ships are carrying deck guns. So let's lock on here. She still hasn't seen us because we are coming basically dead on with her, which makes us a very difficult target to see again. And uh, the weather conditions, I, are we sure this is, whoops, a little bit too much there. Are we sure that this is uh, <laughs> 7 meters per second? Yeah, you can see the visibility is very poor, very quickly. Yep, okay, so this is, um, it is possible. I think what we'll do is we're gonna kind of sweep around and then run parallel to her. We might as well get nice and close. The reason why it we actually are using a fair amount of our um, shells. <laughs> We're going to be out of shells soon. And that's the ideal situation to sink as many with shells as possible. However, when you start getting this low, it's not a bad idea to start conserving. And our method of conserving is going to be, let's just get really close, maybe a kilometer away. Let's match heading with her. Match speed, well probably not match speed, but let's do everything we can to make the shots um, as much on target as possible. So that being said, let's go back to the Uzo. Let's see if we can identify this ship. Hmm, this might be our first ship which is worth sinking, with torpedoes at least. We have a uh, four triple structure and a aft triple structure. It looks like smokestack in the middle. What are we dealing with here? No. I'm gonna skip uh, all the ships that are pretty rare to have. This could be a... I, I mean... No, it has a triple loop. Let's uh, go ahead and also make sure... Yeah, one. it's definitely triple and... It has a leading edge here. This might be a medium. Um, maybe that's a medium. So there's a very large superstructure on the front of the ship, like so, but this is not the correct one, but that's a good example of what we're looking for. Medium tanker, one, two, three, one, two, three. Huh. I don't think so, because the smokestacks is in the middle, and this one doesn't have it in the middle. What are we dealing with here? Well, this is a possibility, because it does have that bulge in the front. Let's slow down to yeah, well, I had I one third. I think I see her turning. I think I see her, um, actually she might just be rocking. Is she turning? Yeah, she's turning. <laughs> she sees us. The jig's up. Does she? Heavens, she doesn't. Well, I guess that's the advantage of coming dead on at her. 
we'll continue to do that. Give us more time to identify the ship. Hmm. Yeah, this is uh, that four superstructure is so distinct. It is not this ship. Very much not that ship. Okay, this is probably it. There's the four superstructure. Here's the double, triple superstructure thing. Not bad. It's still 4,600 tons. Again, this doesn't matter too much because we're going to sink it with deck guns anyway. I'll identify this. Just take a look and see if it could be anything else. It's probably not a large cargo. It's not a large merchant as much as I wish it was. It doesn't have the two in front, and this one doesn't have the second front leading superstructure. So I'm pretty sure we have confirmed the correct ship. I think we've made a correct identification here. Thank god it's not a tramp steamer. I've sunk many of those in my day, but they are very light. Cam freighter. Yeah, but we'll know when she's seen this, by the way, when um, her searchlight goes out. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make sure that our deck on crew does not fire at will. And then we're going to crew the deck on. Okay. Whoa, this is going to be some pretty choppy water. She should be pretty close, but if we range her... Oops. Yep, she's really close. We're going to keep heading right at her. Actually, honest to god, it's time for us to match bearing. So that's going to be a really hard turn. Probably at some point during this turn they're going to see us. And I'm just going to wait for that to happen. And then we'll begin firing. The idea here is just score as many waterline hits as fast as possible. And uh, hopefully conserve a little bit of ammunition. I'm just going to try to squeeze two more ships out of this 66 ammo we have. And you can see the danger of being a deck gun. Why it's so easy to get washed overboard. You know, first of all, your ship has to be moving at least some small amount of speed for you to keep stability. And uh, that means that the waves are coming at you pretty fiercely. Even if you're dead stopped, the waves are very strong. It's very easily easy to be pulled off the boat. But you can imagine how much more difficult it is. In fact, Warco, get back up to the bridge, man. You're going to be knocked over. Okay, um, I think we're ready to engage. I have no idea where this first shell is going, fortunately. But we probably have... probably. Oh my gosh, the gun is misbehaving, that's for sure. We're going to have to go ahead normal just to <laughs> balance out the gun a little bit. Oh, we're rocking way too much. They still haven't seen us though. This is <laughs> like look how close we are. Okay, we balanced out a little bit. That's a big wave. Hold on tight. You actually heard the engine there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and give her a friendly opening welcome. As soon as the gun, damn it, stops moving. Okay, come on. Let's. Try this again. This is going to be extremely difficult to manage, I can see. Oh my gosh. This is a little better. Nice. Excellent. First hit. Loading, loading, loading. Up, oh, a little too high. Slow down a little bit. They're coming right at us. That was a hit. We don't really like to come across their bow, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a lot of the... not what I want. Dip. Wait. Wait. That ended up being a hit. Oh, stay on. Nobody overboard. They don't actually simulate overboard, but let's just go 10 degrees to port. But they're so close, we actually can't <laughs> hit them at the waterline. We're as low as the gun will go on this setting. 
Okay, well that means that we're going to have to tab out and actually start aiming from this view. There is some advantages from aiming from this view. I think it helps with the rise and fall of the ship, So, and we are able to lower, lower the weapon. You can see we got a water hit there. She didn't even engage her spotlight, so I'm not sure if she even has one. Oops, too, way too high. Um, we should have come more to her aft, more behind her, and then that would have been better for uh, pulling up next to her, because you have to run at a certain speed. Okay, that's enough. Midship, please. What we could do is just spin around, because we're about to lose the deck gun. Uh, okay, we need to come starboard now. Up. Oh, we hit the water about 50 yards away from us. Oh god, that one's way over. Alright, well, let's just do this. I'm gonna loop back around. I guess we could try... Yeah, let's do it. Oh gosh, I ruined our course. But that's fine. It doesn't matter. Just delete that. We'll just drag this guy all around. Uh, I want us to head back towards the west and come up on her. She's already basically dead stopped in the water. Let's go ahead and examine her. And I might get our guys to start firing on her too. How you doing, buddy? Hmm. Was our identification correct, by the way? Now that we have time, since we're turning around. Eh. It might have been a cam freighter. I honestly don't know. Why did we choose? We cho chose a Granville. Why did I choose the Granville? Oh, that very distinct superstructure. Yeah. It seems right still. And the very distinct smokestack in the middle. Is that what this one has? Please tell me yes. Yeah, it definitely has that very distinct smokestack. Okay, good. I think we chose correctly then. And a Granville makes more sense, although I would prefer it to be a cam. It makes more sense, it really does. Now that we're going 90 degrees, let's uh, what? turn back around. Oh, there's the electrics. Well, that's the diesels underwater. Okay, what's our range of target? Eight hundred still. Okay, fair enough. Still trying to turn. Can you please point that way. And we will circle back in for another pass. Okay, this is good. This kind of reminds me, jumping over the choppy seas like this, kind of reminds me of Das Boot, the very end of the movie when they're um, racing back out of Gibraltar towards France, towards La Rochelle, when the, the captain on the bridge <laughs> I love that scene. It's, well, it's one of the best scenes of the movie. Right. We're looking for a ship, which we are having trouble finding for some reason. 500 might be about right right now. How are we doing, though? Gun is jumping way too much still. Okay, well, let's just go with this, then. Oh, it's going to be hard. Ugh. Good hit. <laughs> we can't. Did you see this? It's actually paused reloading while we went underwater. That's so cool. Very true. Ah, we were rising. I, I thought for sure that was going to be a good hit. I'm going to do rudder or midship. Oh, no, this no, is stop. just going to keep us from stopping when we reach our nav destination. Oh my gosh. less effective than I expected. Oh boy.
I guess we couldn't fire because we were underwater. Oh, and it decided to fire the moment it could. That's... Well, this is a time where you might actually consider using a torpedo. <laughs> oh, gosh. We can't even load our gun. Yeah, Has the weather gotten worse? No. We're just having a very hard time. Alright, turn me to port. Give me some better shots. We're not going to sink her very effectively like that. Just come up right next to her. We can even use our flat gun. It doesn't do very much, but... Oh boy. Whoa, these waves. Very choppy water. Okay, even out. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was aiming way lower than that, but I guess we weren't. Forty, please. I, oh, thirty-five is our max. I thought forty was. Yeah, forty is. I was. Uh, for some reason, not able to do that though. This looks good, and we might even have a better chance of not diving under the waves so often. Nope, that doesn't look correct. Oh my gosh, that's not at all. Alright, forget it. Let's go to the Uzo and just let these guys engage. We're close enough that I, I assume that they'll be able to do a reasonably good job. Miss. Okay, maybe they are also having a very difficult time. There's a hit. Good. Oh, wow. So they don't have much better luck than I do. Okay. Very good. We will once again crew the watch position. And let's watch her dissipate under the waves. Currently, it looks like they have a fire. We can't take any um, prisoners either, so we're just going to have to watch her go down. Hopefully the British will respond and save. You always feel a little bit bad um, attacking unarmed merchant ships. Oh my gosh. Starting to have some explosions. I'm not really sure what the four explosion explosion would be from. There's not usually anything here that can be exploded. Maybe she's carrying ammunition though. She could be carrying explosive material. She's going down very quickly, to be honest. That's pretty quick. Oh man, lots of explosions. Goodness gracious. Oh wow. Just losing piece after piece of her superstructure and sagging well below the waterline let's see if I can get a shot at the waterline you can see it like right here is the waterline so she's a good two meters under you can hear her creaking I have to quickly set a new course so okay we're almost at the edge of this very effective patrol obviously we're gonna continue this um, path Seems like that's being very effective for us. Okay, now let's go and watch the tragic end of this ship. Of course, I forgot to ping my depth under keel. Jawohl, Herr Kaloyn. Tiefe unter Kiel ist 8-8. Just enough for us to do a crash dive if needed. And then we'll speed into the future and see if we can get another kill out of this. And we might have to use torpedoes for the next one. And what we can do is just use torpedoes and then surface to use deck guns. So I think from here on in with tor we're torpedo locked. There she is, she's finally, everything's going under. Bridge, everything, all the bubbles.
All the air escaping from the ship. And the very creepy sound of the strain on the ship. She's still in one piece. I mean, as far as the main part of her hull. Um, usually the impact with the ground it would not happen exactly like this. Um, this thing is going to have a very elastic collision here in a second. So it just this one just nose down very lightly. But that kind of hit would usually crack the hole. The hole's not obviously designed to <laughs> just come crashing down. And the full weight of the ship is on the nose whenever it hits, so it usually cracks the nose off. But there it is. That's her final resting place. God save the sailors that had to abandon ship. But let's go back and uh, push on to our patrol route. They're none of our concern. They'll, they're in the hands of a higher power now. How are we doing? Yeah, I kept the time compression up pretty decently. I'm not going to dive this time because we don't really need to. It's the middle of the night and we're going to be out of there really before anything happens. So I'm very content just to keep pushing on on the surface. In the middle of the day, you just have to avoid aircraft and you're not that easy to spot at night. Obviously, your wake is a huge tell, probably an even more, uh, an even more important tell at night than it is during the day because of the white foam it's um, very visible so that's important I don't think they have lay lights yet which were um, these big searchlights installed to spot uh, submarines and submarines when they were spotted by these lay lights when this, the lay lights would just turn on right onto the submarine because this is at the point in the war when radar was already used and they could detect submarines and fly over them um, you'd usually just light up the ley light and it would be so bright the submarine crew wouldn't even know what was going on. They wouldn't be able to react very well. Um, you know, they intentionally... The eye patch that pirates used to wear was a method for them going under the... into the cabin area without losing vision so that they wanted one eye always to be like night vision ready, which is why during the day they would wear an eye patch over one so that they had to go um, below the surface quickly. Oh, well, it is our lucky day. We're getting another one. I mean, it looks like we're practically dead on as is. Okay, well, modify the course. So that eye patch was just to help them with night vision. Because um, if you have one eye who, that's looking into an eye patch, it's going to be okay. Coastal vessel. This is a pretty small one, then, based on the crew report. I myself cannot see it personally, as I see absolutely nothing. I only saw that up in the top right we had something happen, but I see nothing now. Can you guys see these ships that they're supposed to be out there? Maybe I'll have to watch the video again to see if I'm missing it. Uh, yeah, they should be just to starboard of... So they should be around here, actually. Yet, I don't see anything. We don't see anything collectively. Fine, fair enough. Um, it's a coastal vessel, so this might be the last ship we try to engage with deck guns. It's not as interesting, but this is an extremely difficult ship to hit with torpedoes, even. <laughs> it's so narrow, and it's so shallow. The keel is so shallow on these coastal vessels. I mean, that's natural enough because they're a coastal vessel. But it does mean that our torpedoes have to run basically at the surface in order to hit. Still, if you're going to fire a torpedo at night, I mean... Um, at the surface, a steam torpedo. Night is the time to do it. Oh, and that's another thing. We'll definitely have to raid Scapa Flow during the night because there's no way in heck I'm going to be launching steam torpedoes into that bay during the day. There's just no way. So I think we'll be able to get this one 
put this one under with yet oh we didn't even check what kind of it was a granville type freighter so we were correct and that's the first one we've had which is over 3,000 tons 3,000 tons is like my break point for like something that was significant so we've done really well for ourselves I already taken five out and all with deck guns which means all these torpedoes left and we're gonna want um, probably at least let's say at least six four tubes left and probably two aft for the return trip if we plan on going to Scapa Flow. So it was very good of us to actually save torpedoes. Okay, so she is gonna be traveling south of our line, so for intercept, I guess we'll just stay on this course though. Okay. I still can't see her, she should be just dead on. Okay, I'm able to lock on, but I see nothing. I see absolutely nothing. I see nothing. Whoever spotted this ship has amazing vision. I really don't see anything. Okay, well, let's just go full speed ahead for a while. And uh, soon enough we'll see it. I'm sure we can see it now. <laughs> What's our angle? Gosh, I can't. <laughs> Looks like it's 355. Okay. Ah, there she is. Oh yeah, she's a tiny one. Lights are off, so that's our cue to engage. Do one more final check with weather. Okay. So we'll do the same thing with this one. We're gonna actually peel away now. And then we'll come back around to her. We'll come back from the stern this time, which is what I should have done on the first one. Let's go ahead and hand standard and begin navigating. In fact, I probably can do it this way. We can run at a higher speed. Um, where'd she go? Missing her. Where'd she go? She's almost to 310 now. Okay. Fair enough. Ah, yes, I see the smoke she's making. I don't see her really, but I see the smoke she's making. You know, we have to be very careful. We don't even know. Our, uh, supposedly, our hydrophone operator has informed us that it is. Um, the propellers have the merchant sound, which just means that they go chug, 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 instead of going. That's, uh, sorry for the sound impression, but that, honestly, the merchant ships had a much slower turn RPM, um, and the military ships obviously have much higher RPM. So if this is a low RPM, kind of lower baseline, high, we can just tell. Let's go to the, oh, uh, well, we're at the surface. Not a whole lot is gonna happen there, sorry. Where did this ship go? I keep losing her. Gotta look for the smoke. These damn things are so hard to spot. There it is. Okay. She is really hard to see. So I'm, I'm relying on that report. I should have verified it, obviously, but <laughs> I didn't. It's too late now. So <laughs> we're stuck just hoping that it was correct. Again, there it is. I cannot identify this yet, so let's go speed this up a little bit. Lights off makes it a target. I think I see it more or less now. I think this is the same exact same ship we've already sank a few times. Um, it has the rear smokestack. Let's see, has she seen us yet? Is she doing any kind of weaving? Still hasn't seen us. Okay, we'll just come back around now. Basically just trying to keep our broadside to her as much as possible and make ourselves as noticeable as possible. <laughs> 
Still, she hasn't seen us, so it's a good sign that this is how amazing attacking at night is. You know, if you can do it. Let's go ahead and do this. Now it's probably a good time for us to crew our deck on. Very good. And... Begin a slow turn. So, and we'll put ourselves kind of parallel to course. Very good. Now we can begin firing at a point. Let's see how we're doing. I see her. She's pretty close. Lights are off, so hard to see her, but that's the point, of course. Yeah, we have enough shells to get this one done. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to fire from this mode because we want to be able to see that deck on sway around in the choppy water. You know what, let's get a little bit closer. So I'll do this from the bridge, a little more realistic, kind of fun. Give me a 20 degrees turn to starboard, Jawohl, please. Herr Kaloin. Neuer Kurs, neun, neun. Okay, we'll accelerate a little bit. Come at her. Yeah, this is good. Actually, it looks like the moon is behind us. No, nope, we just have pretty good visibility for some reason. Okay, now bring me back 20 degrees. Well, just go 15 back Jawohl, to Herr Kaloin. Neuer Kurs, vier. We're close enough. You can see how easy it would be to engage with the flat guns. And you know what? Now that I mentioned it, let's get a flak person up there. Oh, come on. Let's get a watch guy up there. Oh, he's not any better. I'm surprised. I guess it doesn't matter what their skill is as long as its endurance is high. Okay, well then flak person, you can... I mean, Watchmen, you can mount the flak. And we'll go ahead and engage with both. <clears throat> so what I could do, this will be kind of interesting, is I could rely on my guys to open fire with the gun, and I can mount, I can, you know, man the flak myself. This seems pretty cool. Fire. Whatever you want. Wait, 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 wait. Just making sure that is British. <laughs> because suddenly it doesn't look so... Ah, yep, that's the... Why are we not engaging? Alright, fine, I'll do it myself. Oh, I see. This might be why they're not engaging. There it is. Holy cow! Holy cow! Oh. Holy cow! Um, that was extremely effective. One hit, one kill. The poor guy. He's like, dude. That's not cool. He's also floating. You have a. You're very talented. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Alright, it's immersion breaking. Let's just avoid it. Uh, she's going down though. One hit, one kill. Hey, I'll take those. I'll take those kind of <laughs> odds every day. Very good. Alright, so we will actually go ahead and uh, return to our course. Get everyone back to the bridge. Good, and I think we'll leave our watchman to heal up, well, heal, just to rest him a little bit, since we're going to need him when daylight comes especially. This person's also a little bit weaker, so, you know what, we might as well spend a little bit of extra time. Pretty interesting seeing that happen, that, that was actually just a really small, that was a, a coal carrier, let me just map that out for you. That was, uh, let's see if I can go backwards. It probably would have been better to go forwards. I didn't realize how deep into the manifest we already were, but that's fine. We'll get there very quickly. A few more. They do have sailboats in here. There it is, small coal tender. 305 whopping tonnage. 
There it is, 315, we got lucky. But, hey, it's another ship we can just, if you wanna deal with just raw numbers, that's a, that's a good thing, so. <laughs> uh, okay, well let's push on, see what else we can get out of this. I know that we're already 45 minutes in, but I just don't wanna go down without some kind of more exciting thing happening. So we'll keep pushing on. Yeah, I, I don't like going um, 5.12, but I'll do 5.12 until daybreak. Once we have daybreak, I'm going to have to go back down to 2.56. Okay, it's probably more or less daybreak. Oh, it's not. Okay, well, it is um, getting towards the end, dead middle of winter. So that does mean that, yeah, um, days are longer. I mean, nights are longer. <laughs> so... Sun is not rising very quickly. Probably by, and we're also pretty far north, which exaggerates this effect even further. Now, come on, by 8.30, <laughs> we expect fully that the sun is up. Good, our watch crew are on deck. Still deck on territory. Well, if we can, let's make a quick dive just to determine if there's anybody near. Let's follow her. Underwater. Aha. Uh -huh. And we're already going slow enough that we should be able to hear hydrophone contacts if there are any. We'll just run like this for a minute or two and then we'll return to the surface. But we, we've identified the line, right? We clearly know the line of travel for these merchant ships. And we're gonna to return to that very quickly, but I just wanted to head up here. You know, this is our first um, time really patrolling this area intensely. So it's got nice to scan to see if there's a secondary lane of shipping up here. And then we can go ahead and, you know, attack these ships over the course of the entire war once we've identified the lanes. And we have a pretty good mapping here. <laughs> so, okay, that's probably enough. Surface the boat. Dramatic emergence of the submarine. Not so dramatic because it's very slow. But we'll go back to standard just to get us um, burning since we're going to have to recharge our batteries for a bit. Get our watch officer up here. How's everyone doing here? Uh, you need to be replaced. Otherwise, how are we doing here? Okay, it's time for another swap, so let's do this. There it is, and get these guys back. So, we'll just swap those guys out. That's how. That's my trick for doing it quickly. Time to get some different sonar operator. Let's get this guy up here instead. Yeah, we need the watchman on deck, probably. Didn't take long for our batteries to be recharged. I guess we weren't down for that long. And these guys are all good. Okay, fantastic. Crew management done. That was quicker than normal. And now 256 because, yeah, it's uh, a little more dangerous. We're going to come this way for a little bit first. Now it's fully light out. 930. Good to know. And we'll come back down. to the. We're just scanning over here, but we don't see any ships. It's unfortunate. I just hope we don't find any aircraft. If the British were... You know, if this wasn't just an artificial intelligence for a game, they'd probably realize our, our general course. <laughs> ship sunk, ship sunk, ship sunk, ship sunk, ship sunk. You might guess our intended course. <laughs> so us doubling back is probably a good thing. That doesn't play any part in this game. I don't think the AI is that sophisticated, but for realism purposes, it's nice for us to double back. Still nothing. We can always check hydrophones, it's the best way of doing it, but I think when we're running parallel to the this um, shipping lane, it's going to be a little bit harder. Let's go down to head one-third. Um, it's going to be harder for us to catch ships moving east, but it's going to be very quick for us to catch any ships moving west. It looks like most of them have been moving east, but... Well, I mean, this there has to be a conservation of ships. Oh! We've detected something, radio traffic. Southwest slow. 
Um, I don't know if we can engage this, and the reason I'm saying that is because have we completed our mission? Whoops, that's not it. F8. Oh, we're done. Oh, fantastic. So it looks like we're all set. Without launching a single torpedo, we have sunk five merchant vessels. Oh, six. Six merchant vessels and completed our patrol of the grid. So we're free to do whatever we want now. This is a little close to land. Hmm. Well, I'm going to think a little bit about what to do off camera and then I'll come back refreshed and ready to... We're not going to go to Scapa Flow quite yet. <laughs> I'm just not ready. <laughs> I want us to sink a few other ships with submarines just to give myself a little practice before we head in to the main affair. Because I'm sure that despite all of our successes on the water so far, um, a patrol which heads to Scapa Flow is certainly identified. I'm not identified, but um, the entirety of that patrol is just based on your performance in Scapa Flow. <laughs> that becomes the, in, the entire highlight of the patrol. So we'll, we'll have to, I'm going to study maps again, continue to do that, and we'll do a little planning session at the beginning of the Scapa Flow mission, but probably one more um, episode after this before we begin our suicidal mission into the heavily defended port. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, sorry, um, I have to do our standard farewell. So, thank you, submarine, terrible tuxedo turtle, for serving us well. And until the next mission, take care.